Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Clutch Talk podcast slash YouTube slash we do it all. As always, I'm your host, John. Very happy to be here. My boy, Jay Hills over here to six. How you doing, my dog? Feeling good. Feeling good. Uh, weekends here. Shout out the GOAT, Serena Williams. Um, and shout out our guest. Let me let me give you a quick introduction about his accolades because the dude's dude's a champion. Uh, three time Portuguese league champion, three time <laughs> Portuguese cup winner two-time Portuguese League Cup winner, two-time Portuguese Super Cup winner. Um, Trevante Williams, welcome to the show, man. Welcome to Clutch Talk. How you doing? Thank you, man. I like that. That sounds good. I got to add some more, but those <laughs> sound good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a good start. That's a good start. Yeah, yeah. We start. We just get, it's just the beginning, too. We just get started. So Thanks. cool. Man, facts. I love that, man. We we got our guy Trevante on the show today. And, you know, we're going to talk about his his hoop journey and uh, all the way how it started from Alaska, you know, up until now, man. So for all the family at home, make sure you guys, you know, before we get started, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And um, let's get into it, man. We, we, that's what we like to do over here. We like to get straight into it. So uh, let's jump into it, man. So we know we know you're we know you were born in Anchorage, Alaska, man, which is crazy. We ain't never had nobody from Alaska. I got to be honest. So what I want to know is who put that ball in your hands and at what age? I would say I, my, my go-to right here is uh, eight years old. And it was not even like, like nobody in my family. I see my, my older brothers play a little bit. But like realistically, like all my friends at the time, everybody, that was all we could do. You know what I mean? That was all we had to do. So a lot of cats just, uh, we go to the Boys and Girls Club and, all the friends that I gravitated towards when I was younger all played basketball. A couple of dudes played football, and I played football for a couple of years, but it wasn't with me. You know what I mean? I wasn't down with getting hit all the time. We practicing in the snow. I'm like, yo, let me get up out of here. So <laughs> I jumped to basketball around eight, stuck with it, and um, pretty much played every year, but didn't really get like to fall in love with it until like later, later, later. But eight years old was when it started getting going. OK, OK, that's what's up. So so then, you know, you you again, we never had nobody from Alaska. So what I want to know is, like, did you have a favorite team growing up? Like being in Alaska, like, is it different? <laughs> you know, you're not in L.A. It's not like you're a Lakers fan or something like that. No, we I mean, it's crazy because Alaska, a lot of everybody from Alaska is typically a family from somebody somewhere else. You know what I mean? So like. A lot of my family, my family from New Orleans, but now I don't like the Pelicans or anything like that. But since we were so close to Seattle, when we had the Sonics, we was rocking with the Sonics. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My mother's from Seattle. So, like, it was that connection. But it's kind of free to do wherever you want to go after you. If you're from Alaska, you can pick any team you want to be on. You know what I mean? Okay. I like that. I like that. I was always down with this. I was always liking players. You know what I mean? Like, I like uh, the Kobe's, the KD's, these guys. You know what I mean? I was following them. So, I was always on their team. Man, okay, I like that. Yeah, there you go. Get the, you, you ain't got to be stuck to the home team. You know what I'm saying? You can go around. Yeah, I'm switching up. I'm switching up. I'm switching up. <laughs> I love that, man. All right. So then, you know, you know, you you, uh, you 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 grow up a little bit, and then for high school, you decide you decide to go to Mount Educom High School. Uh, so tell us a little bit about you know how your high school basketball experience was uh, and uh, how that was. Okay, so you go right here. First off, freshman year, I'm short and trying to chubby, right? So I don't get the you know, I mean, I'm I'm nice. I'm still cool. But I'm not one of the top players, you know what I mean? Everybody knows, like, okay. And I wasn't really, like, uh, doing all the school shit and being cool like that. So, like, freshman year, I'm playing C team. Uh, sophomore year, I make the JV squad. Um, thought I should have been on varsity. But sophomore year, I'm on the JV team. And then uh, junior year comes around. And it, I don't know, I must have hit puberty again or something because I, like, no, it's not a good thing. Like, I usually, like uh, – all the school stuff stopped working out. Like I stopped just like going to schools, focused on being more with my friends and hanging out like that. So grades started slipping. Everything started slipping in my basketball game. I, I would say now that I wasn't that good, you know what I mean? But moreover, I ended up having to transfer schools because I was trying to play that year and ended up kind of digging myself a little hole. I really didn't go to school that year because I was all upset about me not playing basketball and all my friends is playing basketball. So when I um, – so I don't even get to play varsity. I don't even play basketball my junior year. Come around my senior year, I knew a coach who uh, who I talked to before, and there was a, a boarding school 
98% Alaska Native people live there. And they go there from these remote villages where there's only a couple hundred people in there. And this school like accepts kids that are going through hardships, but they have potential, you know what I mean? Typically there's no black kids there. But since I was, you know I mean? We qualify under these type of rules and all this type of stuff. We was able to get in, me and another friend. So um, I went there my senior year and it changed me a lot, man. I met my one of my favorite coaches that I still talk to to this day. Um, he showed me discipline, hard work, what it's like to be alone, you know what I mean? So you just learn all these little characteristics, these qualities, and that's what kind of built me. I ended up getting super skinny, taller, you know what I mean? Growing, was on a good diet, whatever, whatever. So it was like, uh, yeah, that, that, that senior year is when I put in a lot of work and um, it kind of showed throughout the season and all that type of stuff. Man, in terms of your that that's a great experience that you, that you talked about, and especially right before you know you start your secondary or your like college career. That's a good foundation to build on. But what I want to know is like when I hear Alaska Hoopers, the only person that comes to mind really is Mario Chalmers um, from from Alaska, right? So, Bro, yeah, he's a legend out there, right? Um, but. But uh, I, I think of like my question to you is what is the recruiting process like? What was that for you? I know you had some st- journeys a- along the way, like at City and stuff, which we'll get into. But how how was the exposure there? Is most of it going down to to the states, like the the mainland states, for for exposure and tournaments, or how does that work? Yeah, right now, I mean, the scene is obviously a lot different with social media and mm-hmm. everything like that. But for us, coming out in two thousand eleven. And the guys be like two years before me and like their recruiting process was kind of tough. They didn't have a lot of schools mm-hmm. watching them. It was always this like a uh, dark shadow over Alaska players. Like, you know, you ain't going to go nowhere because a lot of guys went places. We had a lot of talent growing up and watching guys. They just didn't have the attention span to kind of stick with it for a certain amount of time to get over that little hump. So mainly a lot of guys ended up in uh, junior colleges in, in Seattle, that SeaTac area, that Seattle, Washington area. That's where most of the guys end up in junior colleges for one or two years there. But um, as of late, we've had guys get to big schools. We got two NBA, active NBA players right now. One playing for the uh, one playing for the Rockets. One guy's playing the young one. Young, one young guy's playing for the Hornets. Um, we got a couple other guys that are on the bubble on the cusp, been playing in the G League. They done played overseas and stuff like that. So it's it's like the whole process is kind of like. Early on, it was like, man, we had to get these schools to see you play. You didn't have really have – you had to get the CDs. I mean, my, when I got my highlight tape, it was on a CD type shit. So, my um, like, playing – the whole process is like, we're, we're shadowed. We're not – you're not going to see mm-hmm. all of our play. You know what I mean? Mario Chalmers is one of the greatest, you know what I mean, to do what he did, and he set the standard for all of that for us. Mm-hmm. But um, there's been plenty of guys that's been, you know what I mean, that go crazy. They just didn't even get – they didn't even make it through college. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was just kind of them, the streets, the they fall type of a deal. So Alaska's had a lot of talent. They've had a lot of players with this grit, with this, with this swagger. But not a lot of guys got the shot, the opportunity to show their stuff. So that's kind of really what it is. But me, I didn't get to play varsity basketball in Alaska. So I'm like lower, lower than the lowest. You know what I mean? So but it gave us that hunger, man. You look at a lot of Alaskans, like when they when you hear that, oh shit, all I heard about is Alaska is it's cold or da 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 da. Like that gives you like more. Okay, well, we, I'm about to show you what's up in Alaska. You know what I mean? So we all got that type of stuff. Man, that, that that's what's up. But what I'm hearing is that Javante, you let you paved the way. That that's what I'm hearing for all these young cats oh, yeah. now, nowadays. You know, players right. like you, players like Mario Chalmers, that you know are making it out now. You guys know you guys mm-hmm. are paving the way. So that's that that's that's beautiful okay. to hear. They don't, pass, they don't pass me the torch. They don't pass me the torch by this time. It's, it's been pretty cool. I've been showing <laughs> guys the ropes, man. Guy, it's crazy. Some of my young boys is coming to my league now, and it's dope, man. This is that's all I because nobody really tell me how to do this. So I, if I could help somebody else along the way, put them on some game, I'm cool with it. Because if somebody would have helped me, it would have been you know what I mean. Shit could have been a little different. Man, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. You 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 just helping helping the youth, man. We appreciate yeah. you for that, man. But you know, so so yeah. I, you know, after high school, you know, your first stop at the at the collegiate level was at uh, San Francisco City College. And for, you know, for the listeners out there that don't know about City, City's an extremely elite, probably the most elite uh, JUCO program, like really all in all of Cali, consistently producing Division One players, taking Division One bounce backs. So talk to us about how you ended up there. I know Justin kind of talked about it a little bit. You know, maybe were you going there just to get more eyes on you or like how 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 was that, 
seeing that city and how did you end up there from Alaska to San Francisco? Well, I mean, it starts off because there's a little chapter you got to catch back. It's uh, so as soon as I finished my senior year of high school, I don't have any looks. I don't have a, you know, I mean, there's nobody that wants to. Mm-hmm. I don't really, I'm not really talking to too many coaches in Alaska because, you know, things didn't really work out like that. So I look on Google. One of my fo- one of my homeboys was he's playing football. So football and basketball, they kind of got, you know, in Alaska, they, 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 they suffer from the same little, little cloud. But football players kind of get, you know, they can kind of wiggle on and get to colleges and universities. So one of my homeboys is one of like the best running backs in the state. And he had found him a college out, a junior college, uh, Chabot College in California. Mm-hmm. I look on Google for some basketball colleges around the area because I'm like, if my man's is going to California, I can go to California. And if I'm good, they're going to find me anyway, so it don't matter. So I went to um, – I found College of Alameda first, uh, right next to Oakland, right yeah. there. Uh, I found College, College of Alameda first. Um, Send them some film. Got in contact with the coach. He was real cool. Coach Jordan, man, he was real cool, old dude. And I found out he was in the NBA too. So it was like, oh, this is where I need to be. You know what I mean? This is it. And I, it just so happened that my schedule linked up that I was in um, – I was in L.A. after finishing a AAU tournament and my family had flew down because we had an old auntie that lived in Oakland. And if you know Oakland, Alameda, that's right through the bridge. So it's our little tunnel. So I we, we drive up to Oakland and come to find out my auntie stays seven minutes away from the school. We get there. I'm not even thinking about it. My mom says, call that one school that was near there. And then my auntie says she's like 92 at the time. So she's like. Yeah, that school's right around there. We all hop in the car, call the coach. He's like, yeah, pull up. We pull up. He's like, man, yeah, I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Da, 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 da. Come back in this time. Come back in two weeks, basically, and we'll get you started. And that's just kind of how it happened for me. Boom. Just got connected right there. That worked out. And then um, so I did two years there. I did two years at uh, College Alameda. I did one year my first year I played. I was doing cool, but I didn't. I wasn't ready. You know, it was oh, – it was – it was Bay Area basketball, and a lot of Oakland dudes was in there hooping. So playing college was kind of tough, and I'm in different gyms all the time. Like, I'm 24-hour fitness up. I'm knowing all the guys. So getting my – you know what I mean? But I wasn't – I had to do my grades. You had to do all the other stuff. So I had to sit out a year to catch back up on school. And in that time that I was sitting out, I was working a job at 24-hour fitness, and I had – I was hooping on my lunch break, bumped into a guy who watched me hoop, and he said he knew somebody at City. And um, what happens after that? It was like, yeah, yeah, just come take me a number down. Come see me. Come holler at me. Two months goes by. I must have hollered at him again. City says, come down and uh, just get a workout in or do it. You know what I mean? They, the season was just over. I did an open gym with them. They liked me. They said, come back. I started doing summer school. I was with City after that. So mm-hmm. did a year of City, and it was just – we killed him. We, I mean, we only lost one game, and it was like the semifinal game at the end of the year. So, man, yeah. that's the power of connections, right there, dog. Yeah. That, that, that's yeah. the hands down yeah. going to be like craziest story. Like, man, I b- believe that the you know, God, the Lord, been ordained or that, like, watching over yeah. you. That's that's the, that that's that's crazy, man. But what we know, what, what I want to know is, you know, you're one of our kind of our first guests to be real that um, that you know played in the JUCO system in California because JUCO in California and JUCO in any other states are just are, are different, yeah, right? Like yeah, you, you can pay that money. Exactly. You don't get right. no scholarship in California, so you gotta if you coming from out of state, you gotta pay money. You gotta you gotta you know what I mean? Gotta yeah. Pay for school. Exactly, man. So, 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 you know, talk, I guess, you know, talk to us about that. Like that was a whole nother beast. I know a little bit off camera, you were talking about how you were commuting to like from people that's not from the Bay area, you know, BART is basically like a subway. So you was like, you know, you was taking that, like, talk to us about the, you know, the difficulties of that and just oh, keeping grades. School. Crazy cause, you know, if you, if anybody understands junior college, junior college is like, it's really for grown ups. You know what I mean? Like it ain't for like the grown people. There's grown people in your classes and, like you're on your own, like even in the junior college system when it comes to basketball, like they wasn't putting us in these crazy apartments or, you know what I mean, where we were all and we were getting paid money. No, it wasn't like that. So like I'm having to really, I'm from, I would say 85, 65% of the time, I was hopping bark, running to get on this train and jumping on this, sneaking in, boom, and then doing it all the way to San Francisco trying to make practice, getting, get, being late to practice. Coach is like, yo, you got, you, you, you mess up again, you're done. 
So I'm trying to find out ways. Then I go, that's where I went to go stay in um, Daly City for a couple of nights just to get to practice easier. Some of the players had a little apartment over there. We was just all lapped up in the couch, whatever it is. You know what I mean? We was just making it work. So it was – in the process, it seemed hard. But now I look back, those were, the, those were some of my best days, just running around, trying to get to school, all this type of stuff. So it was real cool, man. It was real good. Man, that's what's up, bro. That yeah, that yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, honestly, I know li living in the city is is crazy, man. Like I, I already know about that whole hopping bar, getting on the bus, <laughs> all that yeah. is is, is crazy. I didn't know nothing about it, and I'm I'm on AC Transit. I'm I figured it all out eventually, though. But it was cool just to learn how. And I'm like, man, I'm in a big city. Like this is on video games and stuff. Like this is San Francisco, and I'm coming from Oakland, having to get over there. So. But it was cool, man. It all worked out. Everybody around me was cool. I was playing on a team of like 13 Division One guys, 12 Division One guys. So that whole process was a good learning experience. And dude's still my friends now. So it, it worked out. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, you know, after your after your time at, at City, you, you end up going to Adam State in Colorado. So talk to us about, you know, how that recruitment process was. Uh, how did you know how did that come about? Uh, when how did you feel when you first got that letter and you, you know, it was juice to go? How about all that? Well, I mean, initially you bummed because you just lost. We didn't win a state championship. I feel like if I would won a state championship with City, we all would have went D1. But mm -hmm. it was um, – for me, it was more so about, um, okay, so I'm on a team with all these Division One players. I know that these guys are getting looks, and I know that, okay, my, one of my looks are coming. But after the season, things weren't really folding over how they were supposed to, so I went to a little couple camps. I think I did a little tr uh, camp in L.A., something like that, but – I, for me, it was like I always just wanted to get my school. Like, I, if I wasn't going big time, it wasn't going to happen for me like that. Okay, I was cool. I was going to take what they gave me and just keep working, whatever. So what ended up happening is Adam State, uh, they ended up recruiting me. And um, shout out to my coach, Lewis Wilson, and my other guy. They they recruited me, and Lewis has a little – my coach, he had a uh, – he's from Alaska. You know what I mean? But we and he went to school with my dad and my auntie, but we didn't really know each other like that. But I know all of his family and everything like that. But he's not the guy who really recruited me. He was his assistant coach. So once they recruited me, they got me there. First day I ended up meeting a guy that's like my best friend now. And then it was a, it was like playing for City all over again because I was playing with some of the most talented players that you know what I mean. That was it was just crazy. It was insane. Like these guys are really like NBA talent. But they just maybe they slacked off in school for two years. You know what I mean? But everybody on the team was official, official. So I'm getting out the mud all over again. But it was cool because it was like my level, my speed. You know what I mean? So I was able to, you know, get better and still, and, you know, I found ways to improve throughout the season. And um, yeah, but man, Adam State was different. We was in a small little city, Alamosa. Uh, wasn't too many things going on. We had two couple bars or something we used to go out to. And <laughs> it used to be cool, though, because it was like a real close-knit type of a deal. And it was like family over there. It was real family. I knew some guys. Like, it was a there was a connection. I knew some guys from Alaska that were already there going to school through a connection with all this Alaska stuff that we had going on over there. So it really fit perfect. It was like the perfect little spot for me. And then uh, – after that, I had I had left there because every uh, we didn't finish the season how we wanted to, and I ended up leaving there and going back to Alaska Fairbanks to finish my senior year. Okay, yeah. So, so but, but, you know, we we gonna get to we gonna get to Alaska. But what I want to know is, man, in that in that you know that one season that you were at Adam State, you led the team in steals. I you know we of course do a lot of research uh, yeah. before pr prior to the episode. I I just constantly saw everybody praising you because of your defense. And so you know, being an elite defender, leading the, leading the team in steals. Talk to us about you know walk us through or the the fans at home. How how it is like what what's going through your mindset as a defender? I know like a lot of a lot of coaches say like you know look at the hip you know don't look at their feet and all this and all that. So talk to us a little bit about you know your mindset, but no, don't give away too much of your game. Yeah, <laughs> it's really about man just the willingness to do it, knowing it's a dirty job, but like getting down and being like yo I'm gonna do this dirty job because I know not everybody's gonna be able to appreciate it, but the people that the real ones, the real players that hoop, they gonna know like oh okay this is real. You know what I mean? So, and then at coming from that city situation, 
to another situation where I'm not the best athlete. I'm not the biggest guy. I don't jump the highs. I'm not doing windmill dunks. You know what I mean? Behind my head type of a deal. So I have to find ways to 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 make my point, you know, get my point across to say, yo, I belong here. And that's been always my take. And you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get embarrassed. Nobody wants to be embarrassed. So the best way to go into it is like kind of like upbeat, have some enthusiasm about what you're about to do. If my guy don't touch the ball. That means I like, you know what I mean? I don't have the chance to get embarrassed or anything like that. So for me, it's just like taking that, taking that, that badge, like, yo, I want to do it. I want to be out here. And I know it's an easy way to get more exposure, get more minutes. Everybody loves the, the guy that works hard, the defender that's on the floor. And there's always a space for that guy. You know what I mean? Everybody can get buckets. You know what I mean? You find mad guys that can get buckets and they can do different things, but can they get buckets and play defense? Or can they get buckets and assist or something like that? So it's all about having all the other intangibles and putting it all together. So for me, defense is one of my first things. Like, I know if I can play defense good, I can stay on the court. And, you know, it gives me the upper hand on other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. And I, and I kind of wanted to ask you, because I did play at, at Foothill before I went to my college and ended up ultimately playing in Canada, but, but uh, college. But I wanted to ask you, like, coming from a JUCO um, and, and playing, you know, at, at your next at your next stop at Adam State and then going on to Alaska, what did you, did you kind of use that chip on your shoulder and that extra motivation of kind of like, oh, this dude went to JUCO, he didn't even come here straight, like, uh, he didn't even come here straight out of high school. Was that something you used? Because that's something definitely I kind of fed on uh, as I, oh, yeah, as I for progressed. Sure, for sure. It's like Juco boys got to hold on to that. If you ain't kind of like, yeah, yeah. I'm, there was a couple, a lot of, and it's crazy. You get to that college, five, six guys been to Juco already. So we already mm -hmm. know the mindset of like, yo, you don't have to, you know, it's peanut butter jelly. You're going to have to get it how you live type of a deal. Mm -hmm. Juco ain't like, you know what I mean? This ain't no university. So I've carried that everywhere I go. And I look at some of my old tweets or some posts I've made before. It would definitely say Juco boys on there because that Juco life is something different. I wish they would have did that uh, 30 for 30 stuff or that whatever it is on Netflix they mm -hmm. got when we was yeah. playing because I was having to really run from Bart. I was that was getting <laughs> pretty warm up yeah. before I was in that practice. We was running. But it was cool, man. It was all, it was all cool. Man, absolutely, man, absolutely, yeah, de de definitely, you know, having that JUCO in you, you know, builds that grit, builds that grind in you that some of the players that just go straight out of high school just simply uh, don't have, man, but so then, so, so then, you know, after your time, uh, your your time at Adam State, like how you mentioned, you go back home to Alaska, you know, the hometown hero going back home, and man, you killed it, man, started in all 30 games, led the team in scoring, led the team in double-doubles, led the team in steals, so, you know, knowing that you're such a vital piece of the team's success, like how, how you know, how how did your mindset mindset switch coming into the games? How were you, you know, were you having to do special things to get in the mode right before games came in? Or like, you know, talk to us about that. Like you were the guy on the team. Man, going that senior year. So I ended up, I'm, I'm, I'm my home city's Anchorage. The city I played for is Fairbanks. So I wasn't – when we first – when I'm on the phone with me and my, co my coach from Adam State, we're calling uh, both the Alaska schools because I was like, okay, I'll, I'd rather go to Hawaii or somewhere in Alaska. Hawaii's not feeling it. The first – my home city's not feeling it. So we called my other – you know I mean? The other city that's like eight-hour drive. And they was like, yeah, we'll take them, whatever, whatever. Boom. So they looked out and they were like, yo, they'll take me. It was an older coach. And I, as soon as I got there, you know, there was other guys that were already there. I was kind of familiar with some of them, not familiar with all of them, but like I kind of just put it down like early, you know what I mean? First little tournament, it was already on. One of the two of the guys, uh, we had some guys there that were pretty good and they ended up like not making it throughout the whole year, you know what I mean? Personal reasons, whatever it was. I'm taking it because I'm a dog, you know what I mean? I'm taking over everything. So I was real pissed from leaving leaving Adam State. I was I was pissed about a lot of things. So I would say going into the year, I torched them and did them dirty, but I wasn't too focused on – it was more so like, you know, I'm just angry at it. Like I shouldn't even have to be here. I shouldn't have to do none of this stuff. You know what I mean? And I wish it was kind of – the focus could have been a little bit more uh, – I had some more intention behind it. You know what I mean? Like I knew what I was doing. I was just off some rage type of stuff. Didn't like my city because they didn't want to pick me up. So I was pissed. 
But that whole year was great, man. I had a great group of guys around me. And it was just funny that to be in that situation. And we actually went pretty far in that in that in that league. And in that uh that year we did we won a lot of things and could have won more if the focus would have been a lot better. For me, that's how I look at it. Like right? look, because there was a couple games that we slipped up on in the beginning of the year that ended up stopping us from getting to the tournament, which ultimately could have led for a lot of bigger things, different things, but it would have been a more uh I would have been more grateful of the season, but it was dope. I had no fear. I was watching Game of Thrones, going to class in the snow, chilling. It was cool. Like, and they they showed love too. My coach and them showed love. So I got to do and to do what I wanted to do. And we flying everywhere. So every all your games, you know what I mean? You get on a flight. So it was like on some presidential stuff. You gotta fly to <laughs> uh, Oregon, fly to Washington. So it was cool. We had to even I mean, that's how I got my passport, my first passport I still got. I got it because we had to go play Simon Fraser in Canada. Oh yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I want to, I want to jump back on something you said about being intentional. Uh, Cause that, that's a, that's a strong word in, in terms of like knowing that now um, a lot of hoopers um, you like, you, like you mentioned, if you're angry or you don't, you're not, you're upset with your situation, but you're just out there playing. You don't really have, like you said, you're not being intentional about what you're doing, whether it be the team success or or all of that. So kind of shed some light about um, about what you know now and to maybe who someone's uh, Hooper who's listening to this and he's upset about his situation. He her um, talk about what you would what you would how you treat that situation now. It comes down right now. It's like I look myself in the mirror all the time and tell myself, are we really doing are we going as hard as we can? And. Uh, I think this 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 the sense of accountability and this sense of ownership of your life ultimately gives you the ownership to make to make your manifestations come true and do all these type of things on the other end if you're owning what you you know what I mean what's what's going on. So doing things with intention is more so like okay, um I went for a run this morning and I was talking to my cousin beforehand. I'm like, you know, I'm doing this for the fan. Da, da, da. He kind of reminded me of it. It was more so like not do it for yourself too. You know what I mean? Put that down for you too, because you know you gotta pay you. And that's important. And I remember getting to the end of the run and I'm like, okay, I don't know. I'm here and now it's time to close. Like, okay, most people would have been cool with me closing out my run. But internally, I was kind of like, you know, you could still finish out the run. So I did it for myself to finish out, you know. What I mean? But it comes down to just to knowing that, like, okay, I can control what's going on right now. And the things that I can't control, I'm just going to let, they're going to be there. But we're going we gonna to take care of this right here. We're going to keep this. And give yourself the best shot. If this is a if you like your life and everything is going great right now, well, to enhance it, you should try to give yourself the best shot right now. Try to put it up. Okay, get your extra push-ups in, even if it's too. You know, what I mean, whatever it is, don't add it up. Just you know, it's gonna add up eventually if you do it consistently. So, intention, intention. I think if I would have went to school with more intention, you would have got more knowledge out of it. Because now, at first, I'm thinking that oh, I'm getting punished. I shouldn't be having to go to school. And now, as a professional basketball player where I get paid to play, I used to be like, man, well, if I had a couple classes right now, I could take some, you know what I mean? Because there's, there's a lot of time that you could do some something else. So just kind of taking everything, like, you can learn, you can develop. It's like, for me, it's like basketball. If I can develop my left hand and I can pass with my left hand and I can do that same thing with my right hand, I'm, I'm like, expanding my, my horizons. I'm doing a lot more. I can, I can do more. You got more capability. The quarterback that can pass and run. You know what I mean? He's a good, you know, you want those type of players. And, uh, yeah, it comes along with it. You can learn something from anybody. You can pick up something just by observing. It could be a bad situation. You could observe that and learn, like, that's not what I want for myself. You get extra points for that. So just kind of learning that you can learn from everything, every situation, pick up on something. Or try to. Just put yourself in the game. Like, I'm trying to learn. Fuck it. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to learn something today. We're going to figure it out. Man, that's what we- Words are the wise. Words are the wise, man. For for any you know any like how J- Justin said, anybody out there, man, uh, you know, oh, in that situation, definitely you know take heed to what uh to to you know what Trevante said, man. So, you know, Trevante, before we get to your pro career, you know, your very successful pro career, I got one last question about your college, man. So, yeah. you're not, not, you know that that last year in the last you clearly you know had a successful year. But what I want to know is if you could only relive one game or go back to one game, which game would it be? Uh man, I okay, I got two games right now, but I'll just take I'll take the L on the last one. 
There was one game I had like 35 points and I missed 10 threes. So like Man. it would have been a real career, you know what I mean? Real head banger for me to be in a fight. And that goes down like that intention, that focus. It's a, it, I see it in basketball so much. Like if I, you know, when you get the if you get an open shot and you gotta stick it and you gotta really go through all you, you can talk yourself through it. And then in the game, it just be sped up. So you don't get to do that little self-talk like you want to. So, but doing that, having that that loudspeaker going on in your mind, that's the key. And then try, because you got to build the trust first. Okay, I'm getting the right information that I'm telling myself. And then when you get there, it's a, it comes like a walk in the park. But I'll take back that 35-point uh, game. Damn. You know what? I'll take back one of the – I'll take – no, I'll take – yeah, I'll take that 35-point game. I would have had like – 50 or something. Man, with 10 oh, threes? That's crazy. Oh, for 10 from the three-point line. I was it was crazy. <laughs> that's crazy, dog. No. That's that's a crazy game. Um, but but let's talk about your pro career, man. Like I, I when when as you look at a pro career, especially like overseas and everything, you never see uh, a player usually staying in one spot specifically. Uh, for you, it's been Portugal for five years, obviously with two different clubs now. But uh, talk to us about how that all started. What what led you to your pro career, hiring an agent, and then over to Portugal, where you've uh, spent the duration so far of your pro career? All right, all right. So we uh, we finished up leaving Alaska, leaving college. Uh, I get contacted by a couple of agencies at this time. It was like two or three agencies that contacted me. Um, from there, we kind of built, you know. I, they were kind of pressing, so I just I decided to go with one. I went with Durant International right off the rip. It was a good it was a good fit for me because they previously did business with a guy who went to my college and he had a very very successful career. Brad Olson played for SVB Barcelona and um, yeah, he's just he's amazing, dude. He's one of the most amazing players. He got a Spanish passport, so he, I was mirroring my career after him and. Um, Initially getting this, uh, the agency, I selected these guys, went with them, good communication. Uh, so, but my one of my homeboys that I went to college with in uh, Adam State, he was starting his pro career as well. We just had graduated. So he had a, and he was signed to a different agency and he had got a job in uh, Bulgaria. So he was leaving like in August. And, um, you know, my I signed with my agency in like May or April and it was like, that, that waiting period, there's this waiting period where, you know, jobs don't start back up until August, September. And, you know, for a player new, you're, you're thinking you're about to go pro right away. And it's just kind of, you're all, you're waiting, you're waiting. You got to talk to your agent. Oh, he's saying good things. Okay. Nope. That didn't go through. Da, 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 da. So that's kind of this waiting game process. And then, but in between time, I had talked to my boy and put my name in to, with his agent about a job that was going to start up in January, but he just did that. So my agent ends up having me wait. Like we didn't, we didn't, we weren't able to get a job in the fall. So I waited all the way until January. And in between this time, I'm kind of just traveling, doing different things, uh, meeting with different people, and just experiencing life. I just leave college or whatever. I'm just meeting friends and going here. Like, hey, what's up? What's up? Come up, pull up. Okay, I'll be over there, flying, getting flights, and everything like that. So it was cool. But then um, I get the phone call in January. My boy's like, uh, yeah, uh, no, no, the people hit me up this team in Georgia, uh, the country of Georgia hits me up and they're like, yo, we got $300 for you and a flight and two meals per day. I'm like, yo, wait, wait, what's up? Send the money, send it, whatever. So they gave me, they called me like on Thursday. I leave like on Sunday and I mean, I wasn't even working out or doing anything then. Like it was, I was just chilling really. So I leave, uh, leave California, fly to Georgia. And then I ended up, um, going out there, having a great time, meeting some cool people. Um, I thought I was in the big city, but then it turned out I was in this small, 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 small city. <laughs> um, it wasn't what I really thought it was going to be. It was, the bo- it was the bottom league, but I didn't really care at that time. You, you could have gave me a dollar. I would have probably went for it. Like, I was just trying to go play basketball, hoop. If it sounded professional, I'm like, I always kept my same mindset that if they like me and they think I'm nice, they going to find me. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. So got out there, went out, went crazy, started averaging like 35, had a 50-point game, 48-point game. Competition wasn't that high, but there was some D1 talent out there. Um, played against those guys, stayed there for like uh, three months or something like that, and then 
I had to get up out of there just because it wasn't. I talked to my agency finally. It wasn't like that really good of a situation for me to be in. So went back and hung out with my boy. He was in Bulgaria. So I went back, finished his season with him, watched him play. Took a couple uh, – took a flight to Spain to try out for another team, worked out for another team. Just all stuff preparing me for the next season. And then um, going back into uh, the summer, I went back to the Bay Area because I was living in the Bay Area at the time. Got me a little job, started working down there at, uh, what was it, Westgate? No, no. Westgate? Westfield. Westfield. I'm oh, working, Westfield. I was working at Westfield down in San Francisco. Lucky brand jeans. I was one of my favorite. I was really liking jobs, too. I was working folding jeans, learning, like, oh, I can't really learn <laughs> in this other space. And then next thing you know, they called my agents, called me with the Portugal, like, hey, Portugal team, team in Portugal, they want you, da 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 It's set, September, you're going. I'm like, all right, bet. And then, the rest is just I get to Portugal and my life just like boom I think I'm in like a because you see the place and it's just so beautiful it looks so nice you know what I mean so I get here and yeah everything is just love I meet some I get the, I get blessed with the best like a, a real amazing team good veterans you know what I mean like all the stuff that a lot of guys run into I didn't I just skipped it and then we were, we're winning too. I got one of the like a great coach that's like a super winner, knows the game of basketball. He ends up teaching me the game of basketball. We win a championship together. Then we say, you know what? Let's do it all over again. Everybody, we're all partying. We're like, yo, let's you know, let's do it again. I'm like, all right. I tell my agents, yo, I'm signing back. I don't care about nothing. Let's sign back. Boom. We do it again. Win. Win another championship and win more, win a couple more titles in between that because there's these little cup titles that you play for, little weekend tournaments and stuff. End up winning two championships back to back. And then the team I currently play for, they have been, they were gone. They never had a basketball team for 20 years. So this was their first thing. They came back after we won two championships. They came back. Me and another guy who won two championships, we were like their first picks. He was probably their first pick. I was like, I don't know where I was at, but they picked us up and First year was the COVID year. I can remember it like it just it just happened just like that from college all the way. It just kept going. Like first year was the COVID year. It was amazing. Second year we went to win the championship. Third year we win everything, but we don't win the championship. And now we're here with year four, sitting right in my face, about to go get it. You know what I mean? They just knocked me off the throne. It's so many like little Game of Thrones little things that are going on. Like my old coach plays over here. He has my old point guard, my old shooting guard. They've won another guy's over here. So it's like, and then I'm like the guy that's like taking over the throne right now. And everybody's just trying to, they knocked me off, but they didn't really knock me off. So now it's like get back season. It's lovely, man. It's cool. Man, that's, that, that, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. But I, so when, you know, you're talking about before Portugal, before, you know, all of this started <laughs> happening, uh, what I want to know is when you were out there working this job in the city or when you were, you know, were flying to watch your, watch your homie play in, in uh, Bulgaria and all of that, was there ever a time in your mind where it's like, dang, like, is this going to work out? Like, do I got to go and go do something else? Like, do I got to go get a job and figure out life? Like, not as a pro hooper? Like, did, is that ever on your mindset? Or you knew it was oh, the happen? whole time. The whole time. I'm thinking, like, man, is when I started working the job, I was really liking the job and having coworkers and shit. I was like, man. You know, this is cool. Like, I really, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, this could be something that I like, too. And there's more. I found out that there's more things that I like. That's what helped me out. But then I really, like, I realized that I really do love this basketball and this lifestyle. So it's kind of like preferences. It goes in, okay, I can fold clothes and do that. Like, when I'm 40, you know what I mean? I can retire. But basketball, I'm not going to be able to play it that long. So for me, it's always been, like, this lifestyle, this journey, playing overseas, meeting new people, uh, running into these cultures and stuff like that. That's always been kind of my thing. I've always been bouncing around here, 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 five different colleges, five different high schools type of a deal. So it's funny that like when I was here my first year in Portugal, my boy in Bulgaria was telling me like, bro, you might have to leave. Like you got to because he had already been he's been in like six different countries. You know what I mean? And I've, I've played in different countries, but I've only lived here. So he was telling me to move. But now we look at it in hindsight. Six years later, I'm on the Portuguese national team. Got my Portuguese passport, like those type of things you can't really take away. So in those moments when I was saying like, man, is this really right for me? Is this, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times it does happen. You go through these depressive times where it's like, man, 
you you picking up the phone to call your family. They're not even telling you half the story of what's really going on. So you picking up stories a month and a half later, you find out this, so you but you can't do nothing. You know what I mean? You ways away. So it's almost like it's better for you not to. It's strenuous, man, because it's better for them. They think that it's better for them not to tell me something because they don't want to mess up my job and my flow. I'm like, man, it goes both ways regardless because being over here, you you start to lose that that touch with that other side. And then you go back in the summer and it's like, whoa, damn, I'm really from here. Oh, man, this is my family. Like, OK, like I could have been helping you all. You know what I mean? So you kind of feel like it's, it's, it, yeah, it's a push and pull. You got to give up. You got to do some sort of sacrifice. But now my, my mindset is that. OK, I'm going to I'm sacrificing now seeing my family. But what I can provide to them is a whole new world. I can show them that, like, for now, some of my my cousins, they know Portugal. They, they heard it at 12. They heard it at 9. I don't know. You know what I mean? Some of my little eight-year-old cousins might be able to tell you where I'm at. I didn't learn about Portugal until I was 18, 20. You know what I mean? Older. So now that you, at least there's some way the brain waves and the patterns can change. And maybe they want to move their family overseas. Because I plan on living overseas the rest of my life. So... When I get a house out here, they can get their passports and fly. They can come see me, and they can get a different perspective of life. So that's really the goal now. It's not so, like, I'm not putting it all on myself. I'm not putting it all on them. It, this is the sacrifice we have to make right now to get where we want to be. Is that is that how the, where the moniker, the, the name Well-Connected Alaska comes from? All that traveling, oh, yeah. all that journey. Did, literally, the day I was telling you, or the, the time I'm saying about, that time period where I couldn't get a job and I was moving. I'm literally going, I'm going, I got a friend, I have buddies in West Virginia. So I'm going to see them. Then I'm driving to here, just going to see people. And it was like all through. And then I, I literally came back home in West Virginia and I asked myself, sitting there with my boys, I'm like, damn, how am I doing this? And I'm like, all right, I don't have that much money right now, but I got a lot of friends. You know what I mean? I got a lot of people that I'm connected with and they were making it. It was like my life was moving on a red carpet. Like, I was like, I need to be here. How do I get here? And somebody would be able to provide me with that. Then I'd go places, meet more people, and it was the same vibe. So it's this energy, it's this this, this lifestyle that you chill on. It's like, yo, I'm just doing this. It's like a, it's like a verb. It's like you, you're living it. So that's kind of what's going on with this, man. The whole well connected brand. We got guys, I got guys that I've shown in Portugal now, and they're meeting up with guys from Portugal and they're doing anything without me. You know what I mean? Like they don't even need me no more. So that's kind of the goal help people shrink the world and because everybody can win everybody can eat if we just keep it cool you don't take too much you don't be too greedy everybody can keep it cool yeah no absolutely and that, that's huge um and I, and I love that that brand and, and what you got going with the well-connected alaska because i think that's a huge part of, of ball too um in terms of and as you know kind of connections that you build through basketball especially when it comes to pro careers because not a lot of it as you know at this point sometimes it comes down to more than just skill and about who you know like you said sure. your your boys oh, out in, in hungary are, are where he was and you got the portugal ended up playing there and now you're there for five years you never know yeah, how two years later after two years later after the bulgaria job i ended up getting him a job over here and we won a champ we won that championship together so mm. it was like you know what i mean it's crazy it doesn't that yeah. who you know, who you're connected with, it's, it's, it's important because you can get a lot of things done, like, you know what I mean, real fast. And there's a lot of guys that be playing places that they be playing based on who they know. It's not all about who you tell your skills, man. Mm -hmm. So guys got to step it up in both. You got to step it up in both ways. You got to be the player and you still have to because there's a lot of players that since they're not active social media wise or they're not talking to people, it's that's a thing. Like, they get kind of labeled like, oh, this is not the kind of guy you want. He's not really talkative. That's how it's, it's messed up. You're living in a different country for 10 years. So a lot of, not 10 years, but like 10 months. So you got to be a player, like live this overseas life is what I'm talking about. It's like you got to be this player that has different layers to him. You know what I mean? You can't, you got to be this guy. Sometimes you might have to do this. It's crazy, man. It's interesting, it's, it's dope, and it, it shows you like the capabilities of a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Have you been uh, picking up any Portuguese, or, or you've been learning uh, Portuguese? Because the reason I asked too, John is uh, actually Brazilian as well, so I, I know he knows uh, Portuguese too. 
Ah, eu falo português mais ou menos, man. Eu tento, eu tento. <laughs> when the name came through to the email, I'm like, oh, I looked at it. I'm like, I thought I was dealing with somebody in America. This is this is Costa, mm. this is Portuguese. Duh, like, I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, my mom's Brazilian, so I just got that. I got a little bit of that Brazilian in me. I speak, I speak, I speak oh, yeah, Brazilians is all out here. It's, it's, it's bro, they, they, they're the Portuguese cousin. <laughs> Portuguese mm. are just like the chained Brazilians. Brazilians are a lot, they out there. La, 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 la. Portuguese, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, nah, I, th I thought I'd ask you that, man. But uh, but in terms of uh, more statistical output in, in your pro career, like you be, you've been doing the thing um, one through the f four years you've been out in Portugal, you know, close to averaging close to 17 points per game uh, with sporting uh, CP and then five boards throughout your your pro career. Like I've, I've noticed you really do it on both ends of the floor, like rebounding defensively and you still manage to put up buckets. But uh, talk about that kind of output and then how that's translated to the success of your teams. You know, you won multiple championships. Not a lot of people can say that, especially going overseas and playing like that. What, what has all that been like uh, over in Portugal? It's been, um, it's been like development throughout the whole time. Like it's almost like in the beginning I was doing things based off like this, like I would talk about that energy. I was on this, like, man, I got to show these guys I'm playing against the villain. My first year I can think about, not losing sleep, just losing sleep over the guys that I was about to play the next day because I wanted to show the world that I was like, I belong. These guys went to different schools. Some dude went to Indiana, played with Victor Oladipo. Guys, you know what I mean? And when I was, I'm like, dude, I'm a Division II guy. Like, so when I see these guys, I'm like, bro, I'm about to show them like I'm real. And then I'm about to find out if I'm real or not. Then I'd always go there with these high expectations of them. And then like, I would do good and I would be the one. And I'd be like, damn, so who was really good here? You know what I mean? So overall, my whole my whole my whole approach to the game has changed, which is like like sometimes I like I get to a point where I could be feeling cocky and I'm trying to shoot the ball based off of, oh, I just crossed this guy up. Ego, it's like a, literally it's like I'm playing, it'll be like duh, 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 ego boost shot to the neck, and then like now I want to shoot the ball, a deep ball, because it's like it really somebody be telling me, shoot it, shoot the deep ball, like the crowd's gonna go wild. You know what I mean? So that shit's not necessarily cool. But um, so that kind of lowers my percentages. I said that to say like my percentages could be low because sometimes I'm not taking the right shots. But overall, just maturing throughout the game, maturing like where I'm at now, my whole life is fucking just to the 360. Like I played for the same coach for three years since I've been at Sporting. We we're winning. We were successful. And I was allowed to do whatever I wanted to do. Switching forward this first year, I got a new coach who I'm like, my favorite coach already. I've only played for him for a month and a half. And he's just amazing. He comes in the gym. He's just crazy. He wants intensity. He, yo, know, he's on my ass every second. Everything I do, he's on my head. What do you do? All in my ear. But I love it because he's like, you have to, you have to evolve and show that you can like, I'm not gonna let nobody beat me mentally. So I already know I have to evolve and just shut him up with my game too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so Looking forward to production and all this stuff, man. Do playing both sides of the floor has always been my thing. I pride myself on it. And now my mindset is like, I want to be towards like the guys that they call the best. They call LeBron the best. They would put Luca up in there. Like it's it's almost the guys that are on this triple double watch. That they're, they're showing their all of their capabilities that they can rebound, pass, and they, they can score. So That's kind of where I'm trying to shift my motor towards, you know what I mean? Be somebody that can impact the game on so many different levels. Uh, not just, you know what I mean? Because a lot of plays that I make already are not stat sheet things. You know what I mean? Maybe it's the help side defense that I was there for my teammate just talking. And now it's kind of putting it all, everything I've been learning, developing the body physically, get better diets, all this type of stuff, putting it all in and trying to get – not necessarily the best input when it comes to like numerical value, but more so like the efficiency of it. Like he did this, this, and this with all these around him and still had it, was able to have more for everybody else. And like I'm trying to just hone in and make sure everything is like, this is the right work. Like this is good work. Technique, all that nice passes, a little bit of flair, a little bit of ego, but then keep it basic too. Because this basic stuff is what's really going to get you paid. If you can do the basic things, 
and not try to, you know what I mean? If you can play your role, that's what's going to get you paid. They don't want to, everybody can do what everybody can do. If you're not jumping out the gym or you got this crazy, you know what I mean? Like everybody can pretty much do that. You just got to be, oh, and you talk about those moments of like, yeah, this is a great one. Those moments of like uh, clutch, clutch, clutch situations, clutch talk. It's, it's dude, you need to have clutch communication in certain things. You got to be able to watch certain eyes. You know what I mean with your point guard? Because I remember making point, making plays, and in those moments, you can like, it's I'm like, who who can listen to that voice? Because I slow it down sometimes, and I hear it's like, okay, now it's time to kill. It's like literally just me, like, okay, now it's time to kill. You might want to hit a shot right now. The game could go. It can get ugly right here, right now. So living for those moments, being in those moments and saying, like, yo, this is what I want right here. I want I want this one. This is what I asked for. Because when those moments, those those days when I was in junior college, bro, I used to ask for this shit. I, I really did. I, I was thinking about it in practice the other day. Like, why am I? I can't complain. I literally asked for all this type of stuff. I asked for the love because I was like, damn. Why, why, you know what I mean? Why I'm doing all the cook, you know, the dirty work. Why I ain't getting the love? So now the love's here. You know what I mean? It's like now you gotta go get more. How you get more of it? Go get go get other stuff. So it's a challenge itself every time, man. It's a challenge itself. Yeah, man. That that's 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 amazing uh that you've been able to put that all together, especially like you said, coming from a, a D2 to a Juco, coming from Alaska, overlooked, and, and, and to where you're at now, successful pro pro journey. Uh, is amazing but I, my next question for you is all that translated you talk about being a player that that sticks out and doing the things that not not necessarily will stick out on the stat sheet but that kind of led you to now you get the chance to represent uh, Portugal on the national team level man talk about that like we were trying to get the interview for with you for a while but we couldn't because you're out in Turkey right so uh, talk about that man that was so much love dude like I've been having beef with different teams for five years. I've been here. Teams hated me. And it seemed like everybody who used to hate me loved me now. Like, we all on the same page because I'm Portuguese. You can't, hey, you're so Portuguese. You can't do nothing no more. Like, I'm too good. Like, these guys, it's love, man. And they, they embrace me. The coaches in it. And it's like, I didn't have to go, like, try out. Like, dudes knew my moves on the team. They knew what, like, I like to do. They've been seeing me do it for five years. So, it was beautiful. Then I'm like, my roommate, when I first get there, or the whole trip, was my point guard that I had. We won two championships together. So it was like, damn, getting back to talk about old things. And then just to represent, like, it's like, it finally, like, damn. Like, people used to say it throughout my whole career. Oh, you you Mr. Portugal. Oh, you going back? Like, dudes used to hit me. Like, you going back again? Like, damn, that's crazy. And guys, I used to see so many Americans come through. Like, man, I'm trying to get up out of here. I'm just sitting back. All right, cool. Okay, do you, do you? I'm just sitting here doing my little thing. And then next thing you know, I got a hit, man. And that that came through. And once I found out about that, I knew that this was a there was a bigger purpose. There was there was more to be done. This is bigger than, you know what I mean, what I really thought it was. I could live here, you know what I mean? I got a passport in the back. I can, you know what I mean? I fly with my other one. I don't have to use the other one. So it's like this whole thing has been a beautiful journey. And it just lets me know that, like, yo, there's a lot more to do still. There's a lot more potential, you know what I mean? There's a lot more going to be responsibilities, a lot more responsibility I got to put on myself. And um, it's time to take everything, you know, to the next level when it comes to this type of stuff. When you get this, you get extra, you know, you don't, come, you don't get no extra stuff without having to put in with yeah. some more work. Mm -hmm. So, like, the work now that I got to put in is I wouldn't have been able to do it a couple of years ago because I ain't have this mindset. So it's like, okay, I'm getting something. Okay, now I got to know. I got to watch it at the door. And now I got to be on my toes. I got to get my extra sleep. No, go get that stretch in. Yeah, you play for the national team. Okay, go get that. Act act better. You know what I mean? So it's helped me. It's been for the best, man. It's been for the best. And it's funny because you hear a lot of stories that really what you find out is that people have seen you from a different lens and they never really got to see the real you. So when you meet people and they meet you and then they got to see your real personality outside of basketball, it's like it's dope to see like, oh, damn, you just didn't know who I was. We would have been cool the whole time. Like, okay, we cool. So it's pretty dope, man. I can't beat it, man. Portuguese man. national team playing there. 
I can't beat it, though. Man, that's that's that, that no, that's honestly huge, man. Just to be able to be able to 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 represent like the a national team to be out there uh, having Portugal on the, on, your, on your chest is 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 huge. Um, and I'm sure you know you've played uh, you know throughout college, throughout your pro times, throughout you know representing uh, the Portugal national team. You've played a lot of great players, but I gotta know, I gotta know, Javante, has there been one player that you like? Man, every time I go against him, I know it's on. Like it's just one player that it's just hard. To guard or he give he giving you buckets or I got a story I need one or two. Yeah. That's crazy because I was thinking about this the other day and I'm on some cocky shit now. Like <laughs> I ain't never really <laughs> I ain't really been busted up like that. Nobody's really gave me something crazy like. Mm -hmm. But I know there's been guys because I play defense a different way. I'm a gambler, so I get taxed by the shooter that's running super fast, the dudes that want to run. Oh, you know what? There was a dude in, in, in uh there was a dude in FIBA Euro Cup uh two years ago. He taxed me for something. He played for ah, oh, I forgot what team it was. I think he's on the Polish national team. But there's a couple of guys that undid me some I would never know their names, but there's some foreigners, man, that have did me bad. Like, did me bad. But my first year. Um, we had brought in a guy before we won a championship. We had brought in a guy. He's like my brother now, James Ellison. They had brought him in, and, boy, he was giving me trouble for the first two weeks. Like, I used to go home pissed. I'm cussing out the team because I'm mad. Like, somebody else come guard him. Y'all, everybody laughing at me. He crossing me up, scoring on me, game winners. But then we had went and win championships together in other places. And now he's playing for my opposition now. So now he ops. Now we not, you know what I mean? But it's been cool. Like, that. I can't really call. I, I'm going to be really honest. There ain't been too many guys to give me headaches like that. But there's been some guys that have definitely scored some buckets on me. They've definitely got me. Absolutely. I'll take my I mean, absolutely. But but I mean, we, we I mean, all all real hoopers know this, like, you know, the 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 real shot blockers, they don't the want getting dunked on the real de de defenders. They don't the want getting crossed over because you, you guarding the best players. So, yeah. you know, it's, it comes with the game, comes with the game. Absolutely, man. So. Man, all right, all right, Trevante, you know, so, you know, we talked about, you know, your time at Alaska. We talked about your time in, in high school, uh, time out here in, in the city, you know, you traveling and, in, uh, you know, up to your up to your pro career. And I mean, one thing that at least at least I've noticed is just like this theme is, man, you keep overcoming the odds, overcoming the odds. People didn't believe you kept going. You kept going. And like how you said now, you know, all the hard work. It's catching up. I mean, you still got more, but it's catching up. You getting love now, you know, people, people respecting you and all that, man. So that, you know, that's, that, 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 that's beautiful. I, I love to see it. But what I want to know is what's next for Toronto? You know, I know you, I know the season coming up here, you're getting, getting ready yeah. to, uh, I need to see you got a pregame, preseason game today. So talk to us about what's next for you. Right now, man, I'm trying to take it. Right now, the whole thing is going to be about self-improving. Self-love, self-improvement, uh, whether that's going to get my nails done on the, you know what I mean? Going to get my massage when I need to go get my massage, putting the right things in my body, eat my meals on time, trying to get on this program to where I give myself the best shot. That's my goal. Give yourself the best shot. You don't, you don't live, you don't have fun. A lot of these times, give these next years because, you know, you can, like 29, I'm, at, I'm 29 years old. This is this is my time. This is between 29 and 35, 34 range is when basketball players, that's 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 what they say. So for me, it's like give yourself the best shot that you have to, to live the best lifestyle that you could possibly live. And that's on off the court and uh, on the court. So with this basketball stuff, I'm trying to just hone in on my game, you know, perfect it. I'm, I'm looking over the painting again. I'm looking, OK, I like this. OK, put a paint stroke here trying to just hone in on that as my on my whole craft just get it to where okay I got a nice solid thing that I got then from there it's more so about what I can do outside of the court to get the message out get the story out don't quit on yourself stay connected within you know what I mean go without with a lot of things and then you you know me starve your distractions and then you'll be able to get somewhere and travel see new things broaden your horizons within your mind see new you know perspectives try to understand more and then you'll live this lifestyle that's essentially like, you know, stress free. You know what I mean? Your health is already on the top of your priority list. So you're you're not you're not hurting. You know what I mean? You're eating the right things. 
putting the right things in your, your body. And that's what's next for me is figuring out how to put it all together. How do I take this well-connected stuff, incorporate it with myself, take basketball and lead that and use that, my story and that, that aspect to uh, help people. Cause that's what it's all about, man. Get yours and kind of give back at the same time. Cause ain't no point of holding on to it. If it's, you know what I mean? The game is, this game is out here for people, man. And if it, for me, I know that when I was young, I couldn't necessarily think about all this stuff and I couldn't articulate the way I, I can now. And I know there's young kids out there that are hurting, throwing things away there. You know what I mean? I know there's basketball players out there, women, men, everything that's just kind of giving up and, Man, I've done a lot of crazy shit. I've done a lot. Of, I've been here, been in there, all that. But I really never quit, man. And when it was always time to get down, I was always time to, you know, it was always get down time for me. It was time to basketball. I was just in Miami playing. playing. I couldn't play in my flip-flops. Dudes didn't want to pick me up, so I was out there barefoot, man. And, you know, I did it to show that I'm nuts, too. But, like, you know, and I was getting down for a split second. They wasn't trying to pass me the ball, but I was getting down. <laughs> so just be able to get down, man. You don't have to live this life on no pressures, man. Just kind of do you, be cool. And I put a lot of pressure on myself. And it's it's like, it's nice to know that I'm not doing that per se now. I'm trying to focus on just what we can do positive. How can we, okay, you're messing up here. Okay, well, let's get back. Let's get back on defense. Let's get it going. So man, the whole absolutely. pitch is that right there. Absolutely, man. I, what I took from that was TMC, man. The marathon continues for show, man. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, so you know, you, you talked about some, you know, some young hoopers. But you know, one question we like to ask everyone that comes on the show as we, you know, start to wrap up here is if there was, you know, a young hooper out there, a young boy, girl, um, or even just a younger Trevante, you know, what's, what's what's some advice now? You know, you're 29. You've been through what you've been through. What's some advice you would give to a younger hooper or just a younger self? I tell them all the time, yo, man, enjoy yourself, but then take the time out to, like, take the time out to understand, try to be more understanding, try to, like, try to do new things. Just, in, like, yeah, I tell my cousins and stuff, I say, yo, you're the director of this movie, like, and you're at the part where you can tell yourself what's about to happen next, you know what I mean? So how do you want it to look like? What do you want it to be like? Like, really get into this visualization process to where you're, you see it, you can feel it, you taste it, you know what you don't like, you know what I mean? So put yourself in this situation for you to win and what play, what kind of player are you going to be for the team? Because everybody needs help. Everybody So what are you going to do for the team? You know what I mean? Like you're here for a reason. Own it, love yourself, and, and, and just try to like map it out because it can be whatever you want it to be. Don't stress over nothing too much, you know what I mean? It's Mike Tyson ain't even hit, life ain't hit you with the Mike Tyson punch yet. And you, you know, you already ducking and ducking. No, sit there, take it to the chin, and it's all going to be cool. It's all going to work out if you just keep that right motivation. It's like that frequency color. Like, you got to just vibe right. You can't you can't force this. You can't fight it. It's going to happen. Change is going to happen in the world. The universe is going to do what it's going to do. And if you sit there and you you own in and you hone in and own in on what you got to do, man, you'll be all right. It's going to be all right. One thing, you know what I mean? You're going to be able to make it through something, and it's cool. Man, absolutely. Travel the world, though, yo. If you don't travel the world, you don't start seeing new things, understanding new people, and let go of this ego. The ego. But, like, love the ego. The ego helps you get through a lot of other things, too. But, like, let go of this, I got to be this because if somebody's watching me. or You don't have to be nothing, man. You could just be you and try to, like, pinpoint how you become your best you because the best you is going to be good for the best people around you. They're going to love you, get you some good friends, get some good people around you. Man, that's, yeah, that's I tell him. Man, yeah. with, I love. I mean, I love that advice, man. That's and that's just goes beyond basketball, man. That's if you want to, if you going to school, if you're doing whatever, man. So I, I absolutely, that's that. That's huge, man. So we definitely appreciate that, Trevante. But before you know, before we get you out of here, I do want to ask, you know, why you have this platform? Is there any shout outs that you want to give out? You know, any of the folks or the brand? You know, what I'm saying I'm definitely gonna link everything in the description down below. But if you want to shout anything out, go ahead. Oh, man, I shout out all my boys from Well Connected. It's a small circle, but we cool. I shout out everybody in the world. Just keep doing your thing. And here's a dude right here that literally was going to give up. Um, I asked some of my friends. I told them I'm not trying to do this basketball stuff when we was like 18 years old. And it literally, I just rolled the dice and just, I just kept rolling them. You know what I mean? I've crapped out before, done all the things that I thought was over. And... 
it just kept going and I did, it didn't stop because I didn't stop. So the big thing is just don't stop. Keep rolling the dice and you're going you're gonna to get what you're going to get, man. Keep rolling the dice and be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Man, absolutely, absolutely, man. So, Javante, man, we, you know, we really appreciate you, you know, coming on, coming on the show, you know, sharing your gems, talking about your basketball journey. Uh, my boy Jay, is there, is there any yeah, last words? Appreciate you, have- you, yeah, yeah. Appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you sharing your time because that's the most valuable thing in, in life, man. It's time. So we always appreciate appreciate that, and it was dope hearing about more about your journey too, man. Hey, yo, man, hang in there, stay in there, man. Let me know. Um, Y'all ever come to Lisbon, dude? I got game. We got seats. We got everything, dude. Let me know. Oh, man. I'm Good. with that. Yes, I'm with yes. that. You ever come to Lisbon? Lisbon is beautiful, man. You come out here. You get to see some stuff. You have a schedule when a basketball game is up. You see some stuff. You see it real life, man. It's real, it's real crazy. Man, absolutely. Yeah, we for sure we for sure gonna tap in yeah. with you for that, man. So uh for all the family out there, man, listening, uh, we appreciate you guys, you know, staying on for the for the whole episode. Um, if you guys want to stay up to date with everything that Javante's got going on, I'm gonna put his Instagram, his social media, everything in the description down below, his book connected brand also in the description down below. So make sure you guys go get at him, man. Uh, but if that's it, then we out of here, y'all. Clutch talk out. Peace.